You know, I thank God for 2022, but I thank God for what he's about to do in 2023. I believe that God has new and greater opportunities for life away. I want us to go to the book of Habakkuk chapter 2, verse 2 and 3, and it says this. It says, then the Lord said to me, write my answer. Another, another translation says, write the vision. Write the vision plainly on tablets so that a runner can carry the correct message to others. The vision, everybody say vision. The vision is for a future time. It describes the end and it will be fulfilled. Today I want to just share with you what I believe the vision for Lifeway Church is for 2023 and beyond. You're going to hear some things that have to do with this year. And then at the end, you're going to hear some things that have to do with the future, right, the, the years to come. And so we're going to talk about vision. And I want, you, I want you to receive this not just in your mind, but more importantly, in your spirit. It's one thing to get it into your mind. But how many of you know that when you get things into your mind, you can easily forget things? Anybody yeah. been there? You know what you go to the store for, and then you get to the store, and then you forget, well, why did I come to the store? I don't want this division to get into your mind. I want it to get into your spirit. Because if it gets into your spirit, it will change you. If you get into your spirit, it will produce fruit in your life. Can I get an amen? And so today, I want to write the vision clearly for you. Or at least, I want to communicate it clearly for you today. And I want you to think about this and dwell on it. But then, get it into your spirit. See, I believe that God has a vision for the coming year and beyond. And like I said earlier, listen, some things are for this year and some things are for the years that are to come. But how many of you are ready to hear the vision for Lifeway Church? Amen. I said, how many of you? I asked, how many of you are ready to receive the vision? How many of you are ready to run with what God has for us today? If that is you, I ask you to give God a praise. Get ready, church. This is the vision for 2023. Here it is. I want to start out by talking to you about our vision for 2023. Our school of discipleship and our school of leadership. You hear about that a lot. Our school of discipleship and leadership will continue to make disciples and build leaders at Lifeway. These disciples and leaders have impacted school campuses, communities, and the marketplace. We have people that have and disciples that have been made because of the school discipleship and leadership that have gone to their schools, their communities, their families, and they've, they've made a difference. They've impacted, in our they've impacted their, their communities and, and, and the people around them. In our school of leadership, we've had people go through the school of leadership who never thought that they would be a leader or a manager in their job. They thought that all they would always be is just a, 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 a faithful worker, an employee. But now because of the school of leadership, we have more people in Lifeway Church that have stepped in to management positions and leadership positions in their job. See, our leaders that are being built here at Lifeway Church, they are affecting the marketplace. They're affecting the community. It's one thing to live out your faith within the walls of this church, but it's another thing to live out your faith in the marketplace, in the schools, in the campuses, in the universities. And this is why in, 19, in 2019 we, we launched our school of discipleship and leadership because we wanted to affect the community outside these walls. And that's what's happening with our school discipleship and leadership. And our new semester begins this week at 6.30. We'd love for you to be a part of it. News is getting out about our school of discipleship and leadership. This coming week, this coming Wednesday, we have a church that will be joining us all the way from Georgia. They are flying over. Their leadership is flying over because they've heard about our school of leadership and discipleship. And they want to see how it works. And we're going to be meeting with them. And they're... They've made time to come and be with us, and they're going to see what God is doing. To God be the glory. Can I get an amen? So our school of discipleship and leadership continues. I want to say, and I'm excited to announce this, that our leadership and our team is working really hard because this year in 2023, we're believing for in the fall of 2023, we're working to launch our Lifeway School of Creative Arts. This will help us develop God's people to use their creativity and their gifts in the area of sound, media, lighting, photography, videography, and graphic design. You know, when you think about a school of arts, you may think of someone painting a portrait or painting, drawing a picture. But the arts is so much more than that. 
It's, it's giving people the tools and the skills to help, you know, to help design things in a graphic way or, or, or in videos and photography and sound and lighting. If you're new to Lifeway and it's your first time today, you walk into this place and you're like, I, I thought this was church. I didn't know this was a concert. And you see, we use the lights and we use the sound and we use all of our media components as a way to get people's attention and to draw them to God. Amen. Do you know how many people, how many people have connected? I've connected with so many people who their first experience with Lifeway Church is because they saw a live stream or because they saw a YouTube video or because they saw a media clip on Instagram or because something was, was, was shown on social media. Their friends showed it to them or whatnot. It's because of these, these things that have been posted. People have discovered Lifeway Church. They've come and encountered God. And so we want to enable people, God's people, to create content. Show them how to create and use their skills for, for, for the kingdom of God. The School of Creative Arts will also develop our next generation and our next wave of worship leaders and musicians. You know, we need more drummers. We need more bass players. We need more keyboard players. We need more worship leaders. See, if you look at the artists that, 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 are, that are in the charts today, the ones, you know, hitting it big, you know, and the well-known artists, most of those artists in the secular world, they all started at church. They sang in the church choir. They played in the church band. They were involved at church. And we want, we want those skills, and those talents that were created, that were given by God. We want to develop those skills. And we want to help you discover those skills and, and, and sharpen them for the glory of God. But here's the thing. What good is it to have so much talent and so much creativity, yet you don't have the right heart behind it? So not only are we going to teach them the right skills and how to develop those skills, but we're going to teach them, more importantly, the right heart behind it. So that when they do develop those skills, they don't wander from the church. They don't wander from their faith in God, but they use it for the kingdom of God. So we're working really hard to launch our School of Creative Arts in, in September of this year. Now listen, the first thing that we learn about God is this. We learn... In Scripture, the first thing we learn about God is that He's a creative God. In the beginning, Genesis 1.1, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Our God is a creative God, and He is building a creative people. Not only are we going to teach people how to work in video and photography and sound and lighting and media, not only are we going to teach people to use and develop their skills, their musical skills for God, listen, this year... This year, we will begin to write and produce our very own music. And we will release them on platforms to bless the nations of the world. It, listen, we're going to write our own songs and play our own songs. Amen? We have songwriters. We have worshipers. And we're going to put it out on the platforms. And we're just going to let God do whatever he wants with that music. So we're launching a school of creative arts this year. This year in 2023... For life groups, we're going to continue to believe for the expansion of life groups throughout the West Valley. We're believing that more leaders are going to be raised up. We're believing that more groups are going to be started. You hear about life groups. You hear this every week, or you should be hearing this. A lot of times people tune out in the announcements, but you hear the word life groups. Everybody say life groups. Life groups are essential to your faith. You want to know why? Because here in this message, all you're doing is hearing. But when you go to a life group, group, listen, you get to talk, you get to dialogue, and that's where you grow. That's where you build relationships. So if you're not in a life group yet, you need to get connected to one. Did you know that millennials and Gen Z, the millennial generation and the Gen Z generation, that they prefer going to a small group first before they go and come to a church? So if we want to reach millennials and Gen Zers, listen, we need more life groups. Life groups in Peoria, life groups in Surprise, life groups in Tullison, life groups in Avondale, life groups in Glendale, life groups all over the West Valley and beyond. Why? Because we want to reach the next generation, life groups. But we're going to take life groups to another level. Everybody say another level. We're going to take it to a whole other level. Here's what we're doing. I am challenging parents 
whether you're a single parent, whether you're a parent, your parents, and, and you have a blended family or a traditional family, listen, I am challenging every parent in this room here at Lifeway this year, you are going to be challenged to start your very own family life group. Now, what is a family life group, you say? It's not like our traditional life groups, like our regular life groups. No, this year, we are going to challenge parents to become the priests of the household like God designed you to be. You're going to be hearing about this in the coming weeks. Our family life groups will consist of 13 weeks where parents or the single parent will present a Bible teaching to their family. We are challenging parents to sit with their family, to sit around the living room, and to build a family altar. It's not a piece of furniture. It's not something that you erect necessarily like a furnishing. It's a place where the family comes together. And guess what? The parents, mom and dad, begin to teach the kids what the Bible says about the importance of the Word of God, what the Bible says about prayer, what the Bible says about generosity, what the Bible says about gender, what the Bible says about sexuality, what the Bible, and we're going to, we're going to empower the parent to become the spiritual pastor of their home. We're going to give you the material. We're, we're working on creating the material right now. It's going to open up with a five to ten minute video with a Pastor Rosie or myself or one of our leaders introducing the topic. You'll watch it on the screen. And then every parent will be given a handout or a teaching simple for everyone. To, anyone can do it. But the parent will now become the number one influencer in their kid's life for 13 weeks. Can you imagine what our families are going to look like after 13 weeks of mom and dad becoming the spiritual leader? Now, now I know we have a lot of people, a lot of young adults and young people whose parents aren't believers and maybe don't attend the church. So this is what we're asking families to do. We're asking mom and dads to say, listen, to look around and, and we're going to say, hey, there's a lot of young adults, a lot of teenagers that need this. And we're going to ask you, Bring them into your home. Come on, because how many of you know that in the kingdom of God, there are no orphans? Amen. There are no orphans. And so you're challenging them to bring them into your home and teach them. See, at Lifeway, we're going to empower parents to build a family altar where the name of the Lord is proclaimed, worshipped, and sought after. Somebody give God praise. Amen. Here at Lifeway, we believe that we're called to win the world to Christ. That's why we believe in world and domestic missions. This year, we're going to continue to support domestic and world missions at Lifeway. You may be asking, what is domestic missions? Domestic missions are organizations or missionaries that are here in the United States within the mainland. World missions are missionaries that go to other countries and abroad. We support both types of missionaries here at Lifeway. We give thousands of dollars every month right, to missionaries. You don't hear about that very often, but the money does go out and missionaries are supported. We currently support missionaries all over the world. In fact, next month, next month in February, one of our very own couples who's been in a foreign land for the last two plus years, they will be with us at the end or the middle of February and they're back and they're going to be giving us a report. They've been doing mission work abroad and they came out of this church. Amen. And so we, we, we support missionaries all over the world, touching the nations of the earth in continents such as Europe and Asia, to name a few. But we also don't forget about our nation. We support domestic missions in America. We support a ministry called Chi Alpha Ministries that touches college campuses, that reaches out to students in college campuses. We have a ministry that we support called Youth Alive Arizona, that impacts high school campuses throughout the state. We've also partnered with OCJ Kids, and OCJ Kids is a ministry to help kids and teenagers in the foster care system in Arizona. Do you know that right now the state government is asking OCJ Kids to help, to help minister and to take care of the foster care kids? Lifeway is partnering and has partnered with them in the past and will continue to do so. This year for the first time in forever it seems like, 
Our young adults will be taking a mission trip across the border. They're heading south of the border, but they're not going there for spring break getaway to play at the beach. Come on, somebody. They're going down south to help minister to the churches in the area, to help the God's people, to help the community. So in the month of March, we're sending a group of about 15 to 16 young adults Come on, to go and minister to the people in our, to the neighbors to the south. Somebody ought to give praise to God for that. Amen. Hey, it's only a start, but we're on the move. The work of reaching the world never ends. And maybe we all can't physically go, but we all can support those who have received the call to go. Can I get an amen? amen. As it pertains to our outreach in our community in 2023, We'll continue to serve our community through the Season of Lights campaign. We'll help the less fortunate. We'll help the needy. We'll help those who are in need. We will partner with 821 and contribute to the walk uh, to the end to end human trafficking in 2023. Last year we gave thousands of dollars to 821, and this year we will do it again. And next Christmas, every Christmas in our Season of Lights. For the last several years, we've always contributed to an organization, donated toys. But this year, we're going to change it up. This year, I believe that we are called to have a toy drive giveaway here. That we'll raise the toys here. Give away the bikes here. Give away the skateboards here. No kid in our community will have... We'll go, we'll, we'll go without anything. We'll lack this Christmas, and we will use that to bless the children of our community. Whether it be 500 toys or 1,000 toys or 100 bikes or 100 skateboards, I don't know. I don't know what God is calling us to do, but I know we're going to do something, and we're going to have it on a Sunday morning. So what, guess what? The parents will come to church. The parents will hear the gospel while the kid is being blessed, and they're going to get saved. And guess what? We're going to see revival in our community. We will create teams to go and serve the homeless and the needy in our community. In fact, that's already happening. You just don't hear about it. There are men and women in our congregation that are already doing that, but now we're going to begin to promote that so that you can get connected to those teams. We will be the hands and the feet of Christ to the lost and broken in our community. How many are excited about this opportunity? Amen. When it comes to our kids, our teenagers, our LifeWay kids, our youth life, and our young adults. This year at LifeWay, all our ministries have received their mandate to advance their ministries in outreach and discipleship. Our kids and youth will again be headed to summer camp this, uh, this season and where kids and students will encounter the presence of God. Your child, your teenager, will never be the same. We're sending them to the summer camp. AJ, our kids director. Where's AJ? Is AJ here somewhere? AJ right here. Thank you, my brother. AJ, raise your hand one more time. Stand up. Everybody give, hand, give, give a hand to AJ, our kids director. Thank you. AJ is in the process of expanding our kids ministry that will require more volunteers on his team. Our kids team is looking for a kids praise and worship leader. Come on. Our, our, our kids team is looking to build their staff because, listen, Every week we're running around 30 to 40 kids, and that's just the beginning. I asked AJ, when we move to the next building, what are you anticipating? He says, I want to fill this place up with kids. And I said, well, that means you need more leaders. Come on, somebody. You need a team because AJ and three more can't handle 100 kids. Amen. And so we're expanding the team. Haley, where's Haley at? Haley, is Haley here somewhere? She's running around helping. Do Haley, everybody knows Haley. Haley in Austin, our youth director, is 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 looking to expand her team and their team as well to prepare for an influx of students. Pastor Zach and Drea, where are you guys at? Pastor Zach and Drea back in the back. You guys know Pastor Zach and Pastor Drea are building our young adults team to reach more young and women like never before. For those of you who, who weren't here on Friday night for prayer, our night of worship, this place was packed with young adults and young people. There are young adults and young people who want to encounter the authentic presence of God. They don't want religion. They don't want powerless religion. They don't want traditional religion. They want something real. And this is why we're empowering our kids ministry, our youth ministry, and our young adults ministry, amen, to do what they need to do to reach more of, of their generation. The time to get connected to one of these ministries is now. 
We need leaders and volunteers in our youth ministry. We need leaders and volunteers in our kids' ministry. We need leaders and volunteers in our young adults' ministry. The time to make a difference is now. When it comes to our live stream and our podcasts, do you know how many people, I can't even tell you how many people tell us, we found you on Facebook. We found you on YouTube. We found you on social media. We heard the 2819 podcast. There are so many people that are watching our live stream. We will never know the impact that our live stream is happening. We have people watching us from around the world. There's a pastor who started watching us during lockdowns and COVID from, from, from uh, Myanmar. In Myanmar, that's over by Thailand. And he watches faithfully. His name is Pastor Mang. Pastor Mang, if you're watching, thank you for, for being so faithful. I don't know what the time difference is right now, but he watches the live stream, whether it be live or later on. Pastor Mang, can we just give it up for Pastor Mang who's watching right now all the way from Myanmar? Can we give it up to our family that's watching from Texas and California and Washington and Minnesota and all over the nation? People are watching. This is how people find out about us. You know, people have come up to us and said, Hey, you know what? Before I came to your church, I, I checked out a couple of your live streams to see what you guys are like, and I liked it. Our live streams and our podcasts, listen, we've been given the ability to broadcast these things. We're going we're gonna to purchase more equipment. We're going to purchase better equipment so that we can do it even better, so that they can fix this my face and I look good. Come on, somebody. I don't know, but we're going to continue to live stream and do podcasts, and we're just going to put it out there, and we're going to let God do with it whatever he wants. It's all about making him known at the end of the day. It's nothing to do with us and nothing to do with Lifeway. We're just faithful servants. Amen? So those are the things we're doing this year. I want to tell you what's coming really soon in the next few years. In fact, I believe... These next couple of things are very, very important. I want to sow this in your heart. I want you to know that right now, there's a game changer that's about to happen here at Lifeway. God has opened the door for us to partner, and I can't announce it fully yet. But God has opened the door for us to partner with a worldwide ministry to start here at Lifeway. Lifeway Bible College. Lifeway Bible College. This, come on somebody. Parents, parents, listen to me. This is a fully accredited Bible college. You will not receive a certificate. This is not like a, 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 an attendance award or a completion award. When they finish their, their, their classes, they will have a certified degree, bachelor's degree, come on, uh, that, 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 that's good anywhere here in the United States. It's not just a piece of paper. It is... It is a fully accredited bachelor's degree. And, and I can't even tell you how much it's going to cost yet. But let me tell you something. It is nothing compared to one year at AC. For, 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 for the full term, it's nothing compared to just one year at ASU or GCU. I'm telling you, people are going to begin to come to Lifeway Bible College because it's the real deal. And guess what? When your student graduates from high school, parents, there's going to be an option for your kid to go to a place where the name of God is being proclaimed. Somebody ought to get excited about that. Don't, don't be surprised. Within the next two months, you begin to hear something about that. It's coming. Lifeway Bible College is coming. You say, well, if it's just for students, is it just for young people? Anybody can attend. If you're 40 or 50 or 60 years old and you want to go back to college and, and you say, I want to get my bachelor's degree, you can come too. And once you get your bachelor's degree, can I tell you what happens? You can even go to the next level and get your master's degree as well. We'll have that available for you. Lifeway Church is changing. It's impacting the community. Somebody get excited about that. Amen. With all the things going on in our education system throughout our nation. I don't know how many of you noticed, but our education system in our nation is a little bit interesting right now. It's imperative that here at Lifeway, we begin to research the possibilities of starting our very own Christian school here at Lifeway. Come on, somebody. I don't know if you know this, but here in Arizona, here in Arizona, the governor, the previous governor back in June signed a law 
where you as a parent can take the public school money that is assigned to your child, and you can now take that money and apply it to any school of your choice. Did you know that? See, they don't tell you that. You you say, well, it has to be a charter school or it has to be a public school. No, it doesn't. It can be any school. That's why it's important for us to, 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 to build the next facility because the next facility probably should be a school. For pre-K and kinder and first and second. And we move it all the way up to high school. And once they graduate there, we say go to Lifeway Bible College. So we guess what? We get them from 4 years old all the way to 22 years old. And we don't lose them. We don't lose them to the world. I, I believe that, there, that a Christ-centered school can make a difference in our community. So one of our next buildings has to be a, a, a building filled with classrooms for a school. Parents, I want you to know, as your pastor, help is on the way. Parents, help is on the way. We're going to give you an option. We're going to give you an option. I don't know how we're going to do it. I don't know how we're going to pay for it. But all I know is that if God birthed it in our hearts, he's going to make it happen. Can I get an amen? The time is coming where Lifeway campuses, listen, will be launched. You heard me right. Lifeway campuses in Avondale, in Waddell, in Surprise, in Glendale, wherever God would have us to launch a new campus, we're going to staff it with a pastor. We're going to staff it with a team of leaders and volunteers. We're not going to send a pastor and say, hey, vaya con Dios, good luck. No, we're going to say, hey, listen, we're sending you with a worship team. We're sending you with a kids director. We're sending you with a youth director. We're sending you with a team of volunteers. We're sending you with some people. Now let's go take that territory for Jesus. Come on, somebody. This is for the future. I don't know when that's going to happen, but it's going to happen. And finally, church, let me bring it back to today. You, you walked, you drove up, and our parking lot's a mess. They, they did that to our parking lot to build this, this slab, to put this slab down. How many of you know that you... Sometimes you got to break some eggs to make some mayonnaise. Come on. Well, they broke eggs, and we got the mayonnaise over here. Our building, our building, the steel should be delivered any day. It should have been here this week. There were some delays, but any day now, it should be delivered. One day, you're going to drive up to to the campus on a Sunday or a Wednesday. For those of you coming to school discipleship, you're going to come to the campus, and you're going to see the beams up, and then you're going to see the shell up. And you say, well, pastor, what happens after the shell is done? Well, we start believing God for the interior. The shell, the steel, everything that you see out there, and and, and when you see the shell of it, listen, I want you to hear this. It's all paid for. We don't owe anybody anything for that that building. And we're believing that that building is going to be paid for debt-free. Debt-free. I don't know how. I don't know how. I don't know how, but I'm looking at miracles in this house I see you're a miracle and you're a miracle and you're a miracle and and I'm a miracle and we're all miracles so I want to challenge you if you've been giving toward our our legacy campaign or you've been giving for heart for the house I would love for you to pray about not stopping you keep on giving you can't say well pastor I've already fulfilled my pledge I would tell you this no one ever grew poor giving to the house of God come on somebody you can never out give God If you're new to Lifeway Church and you're saying, well, I haven't given toward that. Well, you can start. You can say, hey, I want to pledge this amount of money or I'm going to give an extra amount of money. You want to know why we give to the house of God? Because when I take care of God's house, he takes care of my house. Amen. When I build his house, come on, he will build my house. So please continue to be faithful. We're going to make room for more people. Lives will be changed and families will be restored. Revival will continue to pour out from our new facility. But I want you to hear what God spoke to me. God spoke to me as it pertains to this facility. And he's been saying this to me for a long while. I haven't said it to you because I didn't want to freak you out. But I'm going to tell you today because it's Vision Sunday. Listen, God says to us at Lifeway, don't get comfortable because that building isn't the end. It's just the beginning. All right. I wish somebody get excited about God, about that. That building is not the end. It's just the beginning. 
Because we got to build a school. We got to build a college. We, come on, somebody. I don't, I don't even know if this, if this property can hold everything that God has for us. But we're going to use every square inch that we can. We're going to use, and we're going to force God to give us more. Say, God, we were faithful with every acre you gave us. And God, if you want us to have 50 acres, you're going to have to take us to those 50 acres. If you want us to go somewhere else, Lord, but we're going to use every square inch of our property. Do you know that right now in our facilities, every room is being used. We have no more space. God is calling us to build. I want to remind you guys of this. Habakkuk chapter 2, verse 3 and 4. Excuse me, 2 and 3. I read it at the beginning. It says this, Then the Lord said to me, Write the vision on tablets so that the runner can carry the correct message to others. Did you see that? The vision is not meant to just be for me. I've got to share it with others. I've got to sh- and that's what I've done today is I've shared the vision with you. The vision is for a future time. It describes the end. And it will be fulfilled. So listen to what I'm about to say, church. How can I get behind the vision? See, I don't want to just talk about the vision. I want to, I want to get behind, I want you to get behind the vision. How do you get behind the vision? Very quickly. Number one, pray for it. Everybody say, pray for it. You got to pray. You got to pray for the vision. Lord, help our pastors. Help, help our leadership team. Help the finances, Lord. Help, Lord, what do you want me to do with this? Lord, how do you want me to respond? You got to pray for it. Pray. You got to pray for the vision that God has given us. Number two, once you pray for it, you got to run with it. What is God asking you to do? It's not, it's not enough that you just pray for it. Yes, we pray for it. That's the starting point. But number two, you got to run with it. you got to run with it. Some of you, listen to this. I believe some of you, you've been sitting on a large sum of money, and you've been thinking, what am I going to do with this? I have an idea. Why not sow it into the house of God? You know, I don't know what to do with this. I, I know what you can do with it. You can help us build God a house. That's the way you're going to run with it. Maybe some of you say, well, I can contribute this and I can contribute that. Listen, whatever it is God's asking you to do, run with it. Which leads to my third point. Not only run with it, but financially support it. You, you know, we all, we all can do something. You say, well, pastor, I don't have enough. I just have a little bit. But do you know what happens? Your little bit and your little bit and my little bit and your little bit, everybody's little bit. Can I tell you something? We sow that little bit as a seed. One seed. We sow that little bit and then it comes back and then there's more. So listen, God's not asking for the quantity. He just wants your obedience. Financially support the vision. Protect it. Protect the vision, number four. Protect the vision. What do I mean by that? Listen, if, if you're around somebody and they're like, well, I don't know about this vision stuff. I don't know about this. You need to say, you know what? No, we're with pastor. We're with the vision that God gave pastor. We are all in with the vision. If somebody wants to talk it down, you tell them, no, sir, no, ma'am. We're believing it. That's the vision of God. We're going to build that school. We're going to build that college. We're going to have those life groups. We're going to launch those campuses. Somebody give God praise today. Protect it. Stay, stay in a spirit of, of unity. If you, see, if you see something that could bring division to our church, you stay away from it. If you hear something that could bring division to our church, you rebuke it. You stay away from it. Protect the vision of the church. Number five, and finally, stay committed to it. Stay committed to the vision. See, many of us will walk out of this room and we'll be excited like, wow, that's awesome. Praise God. Guess what? I need you to be like that a year from now. I need you to be like that five years from now. I need you to be like that one week from now. Amen. I need you just to support it and and, and endure with it and stay committed to it. Pray for it. Run with it. Financially support it. Protect it. Stay committed to it. Let me ask you a question. How many of you are excited for the vision of Lifeway Church? in 2023 and the years to come. Come on, you should be a little bit more excited than that. Praise God. So that's our vision. That's our vision for 2023 and beyond. But what's the word? What's the prophetic word that God has for us? You know, last year it was victory. It was the year of victory. And can I tell you something? I thank God for that word. I thank God because it sustained me in dark days. Church, many of you know this, but last year was the hardest year of my life. 
It was the hardest year of my life. I, I dealt with things I never dealt with before. I struggled with anxiety. I struggled. I never had those issues before in my life. I didn't have it during COVID. I didn't have it during the lockdowns. I didn't have it after I got co. I mean, when I got COVID in 2020, and you know, I, I don't know where it came from, but this anxiety came on me in 2022. And you want to know what sustained me? It was the word that God gave me, and He said, "It's the year of victory." And guess what? For me, it was sometimes so hard. I traveled so much last year. Sometimes, you can ask my wife, Rosie, I didn't know how I'd get on a plane. I didn't know how I would walk up on stage sometimes on Sundays. And it was the enemy hitting at me. But I, all I could say is, Lord, you promised me victory. God, you said that I was victorious. God, you said that I have victory over these things. And I would take a step of faith. And sometimes that's all we can do is just take one step at a time. And I'm glad that that word sustained me. And I'm happy to say that God has given me victory over that. And for the last four months, there's been nothing in my life. God has set me free. That anxiety is gone. And Come on, somebody. I thank God for victory. We have victory. And victory doesn't stop with this new word. We're just going to build on the victory. The victory is going to continue. But what's the word for 2023? What's the prophetic word? Well, why don't we watch this video and we'll reveal the word for 2023. It's for all of us. It's for our church. It's for you and me. Here it is. Come on, someone stand to your feet. The year of glory. Come on, church, give God a praise. 2023 is the year of glory. Don't stop. Come on, believe that. Receive that. That's our word for the year. This is the year. We shall see the glory of the Lord. We shall see the glory of God in our families, in our marriages, in our church in our life groups it's the year of glory come on someone shout glory come on shout glory hallelujah give god a praise today it is the year of glory stay standing with me numbers 14 21 the bible says and all the earth will be filled with the glory everybody say glory will be filled with the glory of the lord what does it mean to be filled with the glory what does glory mean there are two words in, in scripture that define glory. Two Hebrew words that define glory. The first word is Shekinah. That's a pretty cool name. Not Shakira, Shekinah, all right? Shekinah, everybody say Shekinah. Shekinah, that, that word describes the manifestation of the presence of God. How God manifests himself or God becomes real to his people. He, he meets with us. In the Shekinah glory, there's an intimate connection with God. I believe that this year, 
that you're going to have an intimate connection with God like never before. That at Lifeway Church, there's going to be intimacy that's, that happens with God like never before. I was talking to somebody just this week who's been bringing a family member to church. They, they don't usually come to churches like this. They, they go to a more traditional church. And, 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 and they said, what they really love about our church is they said, I love how you guys love God. I love how you express your love for God. You want to know what that is? That's glory. Yes. It's the Shekinah glory of God where God becomes real to us, where there's an intimate connection with us. The Shekinah glory is so that we can, we can know Him because He, God, wants to know us. You're going to carry the Shekinah glory in your homes. You're going to carry the glory in your families. You're going to carry the glory when you're driving to work. There's going to be a manifest presence of God. The second word for glory in Hebrew is kavod. Everybody say kavod. Listen, kavod means this. It means importance or weight, de deference or heaviness. But primarily kavod means glory, respect, honor, and majesty. The word glory, kavod, means that there's a heaviness on you. In other words, there's something on you. There's something that comes upon you. Something that's weighty. Something that's heavy. In other words, when God's glory comes upon you, guess what's going to happen? You're going to walk different. You're going to carry that with you to your job. You're going to carry that with you to your school. There's going to be something on you. A heaviness. A weight that's on you. And you're going to walk. I, I declare this. You're going to, I declare this over your life this year. That you're going to walk into your job and people are going to go, what just happened? You want to know why? Because you carried something with you. You're not going to carry depression. You're not going to de 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 carry anxiety. You're not going to carry fear. You're not going to carry anger. You're not going to carry jealousy or worry. You're going to carry the presence of God because the glory of God is on you. Somebody ought to give God a shout of praise. There's a weight on you. Like never before in our services, we're going to experience the glory of God, the heaviness of God that will come upon this place. And I, and I declare this and I believe this with all my heart, that people will begin to experience miracles, that people will begin to, to experience supernatural miracles in our services, in our life groups. Why? Because the heavy glory of God falls on the house. Because you can't experience the glory of God and not be changed and not be transformed. It's gonna be the year like never before that we will give God glory and honor and majesty and praise. It's the year of glory. I said it's the year of glory. It's the year of glory. Hey guys, thanks so much for watching. We hope you're blessed by today's video. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and follow our social media platforms in the description below. God bless.